Francis, actually, I love this about him because we were talking uh, about authenticity before and sort of like being real. And Francis would say, he's like, if I have a patch on the inside of my habit, I want to make sure there's one on the outside. Why? And he says, because I don't want people to be unaware that I have more padding inside to the cold. Oh, I see. That somehow oh, that, see. that there would be something disingenuous that people yeah. know that like, so there was something about him. He was like this preoccupation with authenticity was part of his life. He was like, you know, that's why when he got up to preach, sometimes he would literally like confess his sins because he says, I don't want you to think that I'm some great saint. Look what I just did, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody comes up and lauds him as, you know, il santo, right? As he's coming into town and he says, you know, be careful what you say. I could still father children yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A man who's just like in touch <laughs> in a really beautiful yeah, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so the habit is part of that expression for him. I, I share this because I think it's important for people to hear who are watching this video and are wanting to contact the Friars of the Renewal. Mm -hmm. I was chatting with a bishop who was a Franciscan while I was discerning with the Capuchins in Australia. Yeah. And he said to me, don't be, and it's strange that he said this to me, but he said, maybe it's not strange. Don't be afraid if you're attracted to us because of the habit. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I am. That's really good to hear because I was mm. so afraid that was too superficial. Yeah. And he said, it's like a woman. You meet a woman, she's got beautiful eyes. That's mm -hmm. that's not why you marry her, but it's yep. okay that that attracts you. Amen. And I thought that was a really good advice. That's yeah. wise. I mean, there's something that we, we speak about in formation with the guys and even in some of the discernment process as we tell them, it was like, the reason why you have come here is not the reason why you will stay. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a discovery, a deepening of like the call, because at the end of the day, like, man, this way of life, I mean, I tell people, I'm like, listen, if Jesus hadn't called me, you can sure as heck bet that I would be living in Georgia where I could get boiled peanuts whenever I want, pulled pork barbecue and watch the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm. You know, it's like the grace to live the vocation is only there if the call is there. And if it's just something on the surface that's drawn me and yeah. it's not truly the spirit, then, then that'll come out. And that's just fine because discernment is like, all right, I'm trying to figure this out. And you out. know that the call is there because you've been ordained. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you continue to question whether the call is there. It's like no. me. Like I, I know I'm married to my wife. Oh, and yeah. I'm committed to her regardless yeah, of the temptations totally. because we are married. Yeah, there's a clear commitment that's made. I don't have to made. be internally you know, looking in oh, yeah. every day to see, am I, am I called to this? It's like, no. no, no, you are because you've been married because you're yeah. a priest. I mean, you know so, this, like, yeah, this gift that's been given. It's like- To get my, on your knees and beg for the grace, bro. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a story, bro, that I think is just something that's helped me or is a part of my journey. Because speaking of that, so 10 years into my religious life, I got to this point where I realized, like, in my heart, this longing for family and for intimacy and for love was just growing. And, and I realized, I was like, I don't know that I'm actually going to be able to be faithful until death mm -hmm. to what I made vows to do. And it was just kind of like a frightening moment of like, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean that I'm not sure if I can actually live what I said I would live? And at this time in the month after sort of in the crisis point, I was able to go on pilgrimage providentially to Medjugorje. Mm. And I showed up there without any expectations, but a lot of openness and had some profound experiences of, of like Our Lady's presence for me in my heart in different ways. But I went to confession when I was there, which is probably one of the most powerful graces I received. Um, no matter what else may or may not be happening, there's a lot of people being reconciled to the Lord through confession there. And I went to confession and I poured out my heart to this priest who was an Irish priest. And I just said, I was like, Father, it's like, I know in my heart, like, what I've said yes to, I can't live. Mm. And, and I feel like I'm failing all the time. Like interiorly, it's not like running off and acting in some way, but I just feel like I'm constantly failing to truly have an undivided heart given to Jesus Christ. And, and I don't know what to do. And so this Irish priest starts laughing. Bro, you want to talk about I'm choleric, sanguine. So the choleric side came out. I was just like, what the, <laughs> just like, dude, I'm going to like cold clock you right now. This is not, there's not a screen between us. I was like, what? he's like, <laughs> he's like, ah, sounds like you've written yourself a check that you can't cash. And I looked at him. You're like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I did. He was like, you know what you need, son? You need a good co-signer. 
Why don't you ask our lady to co-sign that check and then I think it'll cash just fine. That is beautiful. <laughs> and I'm wow. just sitting there and I'm just like, I just started weeping. Wow. Just started weeping. I'm sorry, I wanted to punch Dude. you. <laughs> you know, I know, I really, I was like, you don't know how close you were to a black guy. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting here just realizing I was like, I've been trying to do this on my own. And no vocation is meant to be lived on our own. We make promises to something that's impossible regardless of what the vocation is. Yeah. Impossible for us. Yeah. And just realizing all of a sudden it was like, I have this recourse, this resource, this power through my mother who I can run to and say, listen, like I, I want to run to another woman right now, but I'm running to you. Give me the grace to be faithful yes. to your son, Jesus. Give me the grace not to betray the Lord. And, and, and it, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, it's real. Because a shift in my heart happened okay. in that moment, okay. yeah. in that time, yeah. and that has been there since. And all of a sudden, like a freedom. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. I was like, you're absolutely beautiful, drop dead gorgeous, but like beautiful in a different way to me than you were before. Okay. And like seeing with like the eyes of the father. And this is one of the only, like the real grace that I'd specifically asked for this grace a priesthood was to be able to see people with the eyes of the father. And it's like this paradigm for like, when I sense that movement in my heart that wants to grasp mm -hmm. at that beauty for myself mm -hmm. or to grasp for something that I feel like I'm wanting from this person in this relationship. It's like, father, let me see this person as you see. Give me eyes to see your daughter the way you do. And when he gives that grace, it's like, I mean, you're a father, right? It's like, you look at your children as like there's there's a disinterested like mm -hmm. sacrificial self-giving love that's in the heart of an authentic father for his children he's not looking to get anything from them any in as much as he does there's a perversion of his paternity that's mm -hmm. happened right but when you look at them with that real love of a father's heart it's like i would do no harm to you I want nothing from you. I'm rejoicing in you. And I'm only asking the question, what can I do to bless you? Mm -hmm. Beautiful that that's a grace that was given to you, something you didn't orchestrate. It sounds like mm -hmm. a real gift. And yet, given that you're a man who can still father children, so we mm -hmm. should pray for you. And I could still abandon my wife, so we should pray yeah. for me, right? Uh, then how do you deal with the perversions that rear their heads. I mean, it's, this is why I think it's so important to recognize. Eh? It's oh, yeah. Not, it's not one and done. It's like no, this daily battle. No, well, that's where the grace, yeah. I'm talking about like, now I know who to ask to cosign yeah. when the check is bouncing. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap, not going to bounce. And that, that's definitely not cashing today. You know, some days it's cashing on its own, maybe. I mean, it probably never really is, but I might think that it is. But there's some days where you're just like, I'm struggling. The struggle's real right now. Yeah. And so what do I need to do? And, and, you know, there's, there's some beautiful devotions connected with our lady in chastity. Mm -hmm. And one of them that I, I turn to is, is just praying three Hail Marys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, so I'm like, as I said, I'm like ADHD. So I'm not the guy who's going to go to heaven because I said the same prayer every day for my whole life. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just not, I'm too sanguine for it. Right. And I was like, I, I, so, but there's like prayers that are part of like a sort of Rolodex yeah. And when I encounter a situation, this yeah. is the one I turn to. Okay. And so when I'm struggling in that area of like purity of heart or chastity, I'm down on my knees literally. Mm. And I'm like, Mary, I ask you for the grace of purity of my mind, of my heart right. and my body. Yeah. And I pray three Hail Marys. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she's, she's faithful. I don't know how else to say it. Like, I just keep coming back. And if I feel like I failed, this is where the sacrament of confession is there. You know, it's like, Isn't that great? it's amazing. I mean, I'm just like, are you serious? Like, you're going to forgive me again? And the Lord's sort of like, yeah, it's called infinite mercy. <laughs> wow. You know, like, hello, you know, like, I was like, you know, it's like you, that, that infinite mercy is like, I don't care what I've done and how many times I've done it. It's always finite. 70 times seven. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.